Today, I'm gonna share with you the best live streaming mobile app that I have found that allows you to broadcast your content to Twitch and YouTube. And guess what? It's 100% free. That's right, you can use the platform right now. And the platform's called Prism Live Studio, and it is one heck of a program. And I'm gonna show you everything you need to know about it. Let's go. Hey, it's me, it's Wild for Games coming at you for my stream support playlist where I bring you the best tips and tricks and even awesome platforms just like in this video. And if this is your first time here and you wanna learn how to grow and improve your stream, make sure you hit that big red subscribe button and tick that bell so you know when my videos go live for you. And hey, at any point in this video, if you like the platform that I'm talking about, did you all a favor, put links in the show notes below, so make sure you check it out. Now, Prism Live Studio is a mobile app that is available on iOS and Android devices. And I've been testing out the platform for the past month to see what makes it better and different than all the other platforms out there. So let me do a quick roll call of the awesome features that I think are gonna stand out to really be a game changer for someone like you out there. Right off the bat, Prism allows you to stream in a cool, clean, crisp 1080p as long as your internet connection allows it. Prism also allows you to stream to multiple platforms, but I'll show you a little bit more about this a little later in the video. Prism gives you the ability to add in real time awesome effects and filters that you can share on your cast. You can share your media files live during your broadcast, which means you can show your photos, your videos, and even your music. Speaking of music, you can even add background music to your broadcast to fill in the silence. And one of the big game changers of this platform is if you have under a thousand subscribers on YouTube, you can still use this platform to broadcast to YouTube, even if you don't meet that mark just yet. I mean, Prism literally comes with pretty much everything you need to have a unique and professional style mobile broadcast to Twitch or YouTube. But now let me go over to the computer here and I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in the app so that way Literally at the end of this video, you can start using the app and broadcasting to Twitch and YouTube. So let's head over there. Once you've downloaded the app, all you have to do is launch it and you will see me looking right back at you. How you doing there? The cool thing about Prism is it actually comes with three unique assets. At the bottom there, you will see it has live, which is for all of your broadcasting needs, as well as video if you wanna record anything and share it later. And also photos, which is if you obviously wanna take photos and create fun filters and everything like that on top of it and share it with your community. We'll cover videos and photos at another time because those are unique elements that I think every streamer and content creator should have. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're only gonna concentrate on the live settings here because that's broadcasting and that's what you're here for. The very first thing I want you to do is take a look at the top right corner, which is where it shows your profile and your account. Let's go ahead and tick on that. And from here, it's gonna show your account where you wanna click on the cog wheel. And some of the important parts of this information is where it shows your stream destinations, which is all the destinations you can stream out to. And there you can see it's got YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, and so forth. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to broadcast out to Twitch. When we go back to the screen here, you can see there's all the different video resolutions that Prism offers you. You can do 1080p, 720p, 480p, or 360p, as well as other things like notifications and conceals, as well as other legal jargon at the bottom here. If we go back to the main home screen here where you get to see me, in the top left corner where the three dots are is where we get to make changes to the stream before it even starts. Now you'll see there's flash mode, which is actually for when you take photos, you can turn that on and off, followed by mic on and off. This essentially allows you to mute your mic if you have to share anything like personal information you don't want to broadcast live. So it's a good thing to have or know at least where the location is if you do have to mute your stream as well as camera on if you need to make any adjustments, and also view screen full. Below those, you will see flip front facing camera. What this does is essentially it's gonna take what you see here on my wild and it's gonna flip it so that way it's actually readable because you know some things will be flipped back and forth for when you're doing like a selfie mode, which is the mode that I'm currently on so that way people can read what's on your shirt or if you have logos or designs that you're broadcasting out, which is a really unique feature that I've never seen on any other platform, platform before. As well as below that is save video after stream 
streaming. Now, the unique thing about that is when you're done streaming, it'll actually create a video clip and put it into your gallery of your device if you wanna chop it up later or share certain segments or create your own clips, which is really nice to have. Now, if we close the three dots, you will see an icon that looks like a recycling arrow. If we go ahead and click on that, essentially that flips my camera around, which you won't see anything because it's looking straight at a light, which is what's in the top right corner of your screen there, so I apologize. But that is what you would use if you're doing like a walk and talk and you're showing off different scenes, perhaps you want to like the lake or you want to a zoo or perhaps you're showing a concert or anything like that. You could show the front facing camera while you still interact with all the comments that are coming on the channel. And you can change that during a live broadcast, which is really awesome to have. Now down below that, you will see in the bottom left hand corner, all the unique filters you can apply on top of your stream that'll make it look more enhanced for whatever environment that you're in. Plus it'll make it a little more engaging. So if we go ahead and tap on that, you will see all the different filters you have. The first one, it shows the recent ones that you have that I've been playing around with, followed by all the different stickers you can put on. So if I wanna do like a little bit of an apple and I wanna have some fun, it'll eventually figure out where my head is and move around with me. Let's do a nice little cowboy hat here and have all the fun filters. Let's see, there was, there was a real, oh, pizza. Let's do a pizza one, that'll be fun. You can do all these different unique filters and have a lot of fun. And the cool thing is you can do these live during your stream without having any interruptions or frame drops to your stream, which makes it really fun to have these within a single touch of your stream. The next icon is you have overlays that you can apply on top of your stream well, which again, will put different things around the side for different environments that you can share with your community. And they have a whole set of different ones and this will make you stand out that much more while you're on an actual broadcast on Twitch and YouTube, because this will be eye pleasing and eye popping to make you stand out on different parts of your stream, which will make it really, really fun. And that's the whole thing you want about mobile streams. And here you've got a nice little bokeh effect that's gonna make you stand out and look really cool. And the next icon you see is all the particular emojis you can throw up on screen. So here I'm gonna tap through a bunch of different ones that you can see of all the different explosions. So you can show fun animations on screen or emotions that you wanna have. And all of these are really fun. And again, you can do all of these in real time on your stream to make everybody be really engaged within your stream. And you can do these as fun little rewards if somebody subs or donates or you know becomes a new follower or even gives you a host in your stream. It's really fun to have all these unique different assets at your fingertips. You can also put live animations on your screen for when anything actually happens. Perhaps if somebody came into your stream and it was their birthday, you can hit the birthday icon right here and tap right on screen when the asset's ready and say happy birthday to that person and do some unique animations and overlays that go on top of your screen. It's really fun and it's easy to do. And again, it's just a simple touch of the screen to have some little bit of fun and make your stream that much more interactive. Let's do one more because I'm having so much fun with all these different ones that just happen within a single touch of the screen. <laughs> Those are so much fun. One feature on Prism that stands out amongst the rest that I've never seen on any other app is the fact that I can draw live on my screen. Just simply go down to the draw icon, select whatever color you want, and you can start drawing simple little things. Sorry if my camera shakes here, but I can draw some arrows to like my unique design, Heck, I can even do like a fun little Pictionary, make a little star, or just have any type of particular fun on my stream. And this is really cool. If I was gonna show some live content, which I'm gonna get to in a second here, I can highlight parts that I want you to look at or bring your attention and say, hey, look at my cool new logo design down here. The last one we have is you can add text on top of your video capture that you're gonna be broadcasting out. And it's as simple as just typing in the message. So I can type something just as simple as like, thanks, and add that in here and tap on the screen and now I have it wherever I need it to be. And I can make it small or I can make it big and I can hit done and now I can move it to wherever I want. So I can put things like thanks for the follower, thanks for the sub and it makes the stream that much more interactive. And again, all I have to do is just tap on the asset and if I wanna take it away, just take it away. It's as simple as that. They made it easy peasy. In the bottom right corner here is where the actual filters that you'll have. You'll have like neutral density filters or beauty filters down here. So if we go ahead and tick on that, you'll see all the different neutral densities. You can see the natural ones that they have. You can see all the different versions that will change how you look and you can adjust any of these too by just sliding the wheel to whatever 
uh, intensity you wanna have on top of these. Now, if you're not a fan of beauty filters, let me show you a really cool thing that you can do with them that's gonna really help out your particular stream. The reason you wanna use beauty filters is because depending on the environment that you're going in, the lighting may not be proper for you. So knowing which one of these like cools or warms or naturals is gonna help you in your environment is gonna be that much better because it gives you more adjustability to make the visuals appear better for your broadcast out. And it's nice that they have all these preset out. All you have to do is just adjust how much you wanna have or how little you wanna have. It's very nice that they give you all these different abilities so that way your stream can be as best looking as possible as you're broadcasting out to Twitch and YouTube. Now when you're ready to broadcast, it's real easy. You just gotta hit the big ready button down there. And if we go ahead and click on that, it's gonna give you some settings of what you need to do for your particular broadcast out, depending on what platform you're on. For me, in this video, I'm gonna be doing Twitch, which my account is already connected to. And you can see I'm gonna be broadcasting at 720p. Now, if I wanna make adjustments to that, all I have to do is just go ahead and click on that and you will get a window here that allows you to make adjustments to stream quality. Now, the really unique thing about Prism Live Studio is the first thing right there, the adaptive bitrate. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna find the best bitrate and adjust as you're streaming down. So this way there will be less uh, keyframe drops and less drop frames. So that way you don't have a stuttery stream. I recommend having that on because it works exceedingly well. If you don't want that and you wanna push out and you have a solid connection at a certain kilobit rate, all you have to do is go ahead and turn that particular part off. And now we can change whatever we want with the settings down below. So if we want to do 1080p, we can just go ahead and select on that, click back on the screen. If I want to have a bit rate that's higher or lower, this is where I'd make the adjustments. Make sure you check your internet connection before you broadcast out because you want to make sure you have a solid connection so that way you won't be dropping any frames, which is again why I would recommend having the adaptive bit rate on. Below that, you'll see the frame rates that you can broadcast out. At the moment, you can only do 30 FPS and 24 FPS, as well as the keyframe interval. Leave this at one second. Save your settings and click OK, and here is where you get to put in your stream title. Now, my last stream was me doing liquid flows for TwitchCon, but if I need to make any adjustments, this is where I could just simply just type it in if I need to make any adjustments for my particular type of stream if I wanted to. If you're streaming out to YouTube, right there is where you can do a YouTube intro. Below that icon is where you get to share your cast if you'd like to. Now you click on that icon and here you can share it to Facebook, Twitter, or copy the link. I personally like to craft my own Twitter. So all you need to do is just copy on the link there and it'll copy the URL. And now I can paste that into Twitter as well as put my own personal message. Again, they made it real easy. Now there's only one big flaw of Prism is the fact that down here in the section where I did all of my settings, it does doesn't allow me to select a Twitch category. So if you want to select a Twitch category or if it needs to be different from the one that you're currently streaming on last time is you need to go into your Twitch app and select the category that you want to go in there and save the changes. So that way when you go back and hit the go live button, you'll be under the correct category. So make sure you do that first before you hit that button. So when you're ready to stream, all you gotta do is hit that go live button and three, two, one, you'll be live, which I'm gonna show you in just a second. But just a fair warning, I'm gonna change mine to 720p and use that adaptive bit rate because I have so many devices within my studio and in my house that are pulling in internet that I wanna minimize the frame drop as I'm about to show you here. But if you're broadcasting in a place where you're not sharing as much internet like I am, you won't have any issues with dropping frames or having any type of stutter. So let's go to a live stream right now. All right, and here I am. This is me broadcasting on Prism Live Studio. And as you can see, this is the quality coming through as I'm broadcasting at the 720p. Now, if you wanna add anything like a comment to people that would be commenting down it would pop in the bottom corners there but if you want to write back to them all you got to do is tap on the right side of your bottom screen and there it will populate where you can write back with a message if you want to say things like hello or hi or anything like that which I'll just put hi in there really quick so that we can see how it pops up if you want to add any of the filters or beauty filters again they're down there in the bottom corners and you can click on that and add them in real time now they will be a little bit slower as you're adding them uh, depending on your internet connection and speed, like we said before. But if I just want to click on, let's just click on the cheer up one and I tap right there on screen. 
you can see it come up and populate real quickly and it has a lot of fun things that can happen on here. Now when you're done ending your live broadcast, it'll ask you a couple of things. It'll ask you if you'd like to save or share your broadcast out with anybody, which is really nice to have. But if you don't, all you gotta do is go to the top left corner here and go back to your main home screen, which again will allow you to set up for your next cast if you're good and ready. A really awesome feature that Prism gives you is when you swipe the screen over, you get access to the studio of Prism, which is really cool, which allows you to share all these different assets live on stream. So you've got photo, video, music, and even websites that you can share. And whenever you add those, they go down into your studio. So for me, I do a lot of art. So if I wanted to show one of my art videos of how everything kind of looks differently when I do color shifts, I can find a nice little spot for my video, pull it down into a nice location, hit play, and everything will show on the device of how it is, where it's going, and I can move this to wherever I want, which is really, really cool. I can put this wherever I want, turn it even, expand it out for the entire screen, show where it needs to go, and I can share all of this really different information. And this works for photos, videos, music, and websites that you wanna show off. So this is really, really cool for people that are trying to become influencers or wanna show different parts of their content for different things. And of course, you can add any of these during your live stream, which is why this platform and program and app is so powerful, because once again, I have never seen any other app come close to doing anything like this. Now, Prism's probably one of the best mobile broadcasting tools that I've come across. It does so much, but it's not without its flaws. Since it can do so many things that when you try to use certain filter effects or stickers or animations or any type of overlays, there will be a little bit of a stutter because your phone's trying to process what's going on as well broadcasting it out. So for a cool little tip out there, the better phone you have, the better off you're gonna be. The better internet connection you have, the better off you're gonna be. The better you can get all of those things, the more fluid and streamlined Prism Live Studio is gonna work for you, but it works for a whole host of phones, so don't let it affect you on your broadcaster, but just be aware if you're on a lower phone or you're not on a strong internet connection, it will take a longer time for those things to populate up on your stream and or it may have a little bit of a stutter there. So you may wanna use them or not use them. Just think about that before you hit that go ready and start stream button out there. Mobile streaming is a great way to expand your content that you're providing on Twitch and YouTube. So I highly suggest taking a look at Prism Live Studio because you're gonna like it. Now mobile streaming goes well beyond just what you're producing within the video there. It's also within your channel. So I'm gonna put a video over here on the side that shows you how to make custom panels for your live streaming channel on Twitch and YouTube. I recommend taking a look at that. Once again, my name is Wow for Games and I will see you all in the the next stream support video coming out real soon. Take care all and peace.